Beta is, is asking about partners' general level of controls. Okay, and effectively, it's a bit like Blackwood in the sense that it's asking um, how many aces and kings partner has in their hand, but in a slightly different way. Because precision thinks in terms of controls rather than aces. And an ace is worth two controls, a king is worth one control. So there are 12 controls in the whole pack. And it's asking how many controls partner has. So first, let's have a quick look at what bids can be beta. Okay, so if we've agreed a club a suit as trumps other than clubs, then four clubs can be beta, but it doesn't have to be. Um, the other side of that particular coin is this. Okay. If we have agreed clubs as trumps, then four diamonds can be beta. So four clubs stroke four diamonds is known as a high beta. And that's potentially available in quite a lot of natural sequences. I, we haven't touched asking bids at all. Um, so in those, some of those circumstances, four clubs and four diamonds can be beta rather than a cubit or something else. Okay, so even in asking bid sequences, if we haven't established how many controls partner has, then four clubs and or four diamonds, or rather all four diamonds, um, can be beta. In fact, in some circumstances, even four hearts can be a high beta. Um, but again, only if we haven't established how many controls partner has and the bidding has reached uh, that sort of level. Um, so four clubs, when we haven't agreed clubs as trumps, but we've agreed something else. Four diamonds, when we've agreed uh, clubs as trumps. And four hearts, potentially, when we've agreed anything other than hearts as trumps, but the response to the previous asking bid was four diamonds, and we haven't been able to squeeze a beta in because of that four diamond response, then four hearts can be beta. But that's, to be fair, that's pretty rare um, that that happens. Okay, so that's high level beta. In fact, probably the most common instance of beta used to be four clubs and four diamonds, but is no longer. And this is why. Some years ago, a few years ago, we created Relay Beta. That used to be actually a feature of the system all the way back to when Jason Hackett and I were playing, but only in one particular instance. Uh, we, uh, we, Jason and I used to play Relay Beta in the one, uh, one Heart and One Spade Gamma sequences, and we played a relay over the response to gamma as beta and more recently we decided that actually that was too useful and too cheap a, a feature to be restricted to only those major suit sequences so now any time that we've agreed a trump suit by means of asking bids if we don't already know exactly how many controls partner has then a relay in the next bid up excluding the trump suit, and if we had agreed a minor, excluding three no trumps, is beta. There is one thing that bumps beta, which is an asking bid called sigma, but we'll look at that uh, when we get to sigma, which is a bit later on in the series. Um, so if we've agreed a trump suit, 
by means of asking bid, bearing in mind that some Trump asking bids agree the Trump suit, whatever the response, others, the response has to be at a particular level before the suit is considered agreed. Um, we'll see that as we go through all the asking bids. Uh, and uh, I forgot what I was going to say there now. That's good. <laughs> Senior moment. Um, okay, it'll come back to me. Um, so, yeah, I think I was just summarizing Relay Beta. So, if we've agreed a Trump suit by means of an asking bid, then a relay in the next suit is generally asking about controls, i.e. it's beta, unless we've already established how many controls partner has, in which case beta has gone out the window. So relay beta is now pretty much one of the most common instances of beta in the system. All right. This is the other really common instance when we're using asking bids. If we get one club and a positive response, then we always have a low level beta available to us. So if the positive response was one heart or one spade, then one no trump is a low level beta. Uh, if the positive response was one no trump, two clubs or two diamonds, then a relay in the next suit up as shown there, is also beta. So that's also a really common instance of when we um, can use beta. Okay, so as you'll see next week, when we get to looking at alpha, um, Normally, uh, a bit of a new suit over a positive response to one club is an alpha ask. So if it goes one club, one heart, one spade, that's alpha in spades. If it goes one club, one heart, two clubs, that's alpha in clubs. <laughs> now, um, you'll see there that there are two, sorry, three bids of a new suit over a positive response there that's one club one no trump two clubs one club two clubs two diamonds and one club two diamonds two hearts which are beta so um in those instances a rebid of two no trumps by opener is alpha in the relay suit so imagine um a positive response of one no trump, which shows a five card spade suit. So one club, one no trump, two clubs is beta, and one club, one no trump, two no trumps is alpha in clubs. More on that when we get to, uh, to alpha next week. Okay, the next one, the next instance that can be beta is what we we term shortage beta so normally uh, up until now um, we used to always use splinters as a bid in the suit below our shortage and one of the reasons for that in fact the main reason for that was so that we had a very cheap beta ask in the short suit ie the next bid up these days, splinters are quite rare, and actually the main instance where we use splinters has actually now just gone over to a, a bid that's called exclusion beta, which I'll mention a bit later on. Um, and those are splinters actually in the suit itself, and they are themselves a beta ask. Um, so the main instance now where shortage beta occurs is where um, the uh, teller, either the person who's going to end up answering the questions, ask, yeah, answering the questions rather than asking them, has shown a four 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 one shape hand, and 
now a bid in the short suit can be beta. Okay, so splinters as, as a means of getting to a beta ask have nearly gone from the system these days. They were very rare even before because there's usually cheaper methods. So now it's mostly uh, when we've described the 4441 shape hand, then partner can ask about our general level controls by bidding the short suit if they don't already know how many controls we have. Okay, so if you imagine that two diamond opener shown there, it's gone two diamonds, two hearts, and then three clubs showing a singleton diamond and 20 to 23 points. Now three diamonds by responder would be a beta ask. And that would be using the strong scale, so that would be 0 to 4, 5, 6, 7. So we'll come on to the scales again in a minute. And last but not least, we come to exclusion beta. This is the newest addition to uh, the, the family of beta asks. Okay, so this is only after a major suit opening. And firstly, if responder makes an immediate splinter, i.e. a double jump shift over that opening ask, over that opening uh, of one heart or one spade, that is a splinter in the suit that they bid, not the suit above what they bid. It promises a void, must be a void, in that suit. And it's what we are now calling exclusion beta, which is asking partner about their general level of controls. And it's always using the strong beta scale, i.e. 0 to 4, 5, 6, 7, even though partner is known to be intermediate. But it's also asking them to ignore any controls they might have in the suit bid. Um, I'll show you an example of this later on, uh, but just take that for now. Now, the next example or the next instance where we can have exclusion beta is slightly different to that, but in the same kinds of sequences. Okay, so if we bid a, if partner opens a, a one heart or one spade and we make a forcing one no trump response and partner makes a, a rebid, if we now jump shift into a new suit, not a double jump shift, but jump shift into a new suit, this is also exclusion beta. But now responder is promising a singleton, not a void, but a singleton in that suit. And this is also exclusion beta. It's also using the strong beta scale. But now partner would ignore any kings that they might have in that suit, but they can include the ace of that suit if they have it in their tally of controls. Because partner's got a singleton, we are potentially interested in partner having the ace of that suit, but we're not as interested in partner having the king. So, so if partner had the ace king of the suit, they would count those that as two controls, not three. Okay. Um, this kind of hand, the kind of hand that uses exclusion beta, is typically going to be in the region of 10, 11, or 12 points, maybe 13 points at the absolute most. They're going to be very, very distributional hands, probably five, six shape hands, um, with a singleton or, or a void, and uh, extremely good trump support. So five card trump support, probably a six card five, a six card side suit, and a void somewhere in the case of an immediate splinter or a singleton somewhere in the instance of a, uh, a delayed splinter after a forcing no trump response. And the idea of this is that it's the kind of hand where we need partner to have good controls, but we don't want to hear about any controls where we've got a void. And we're only interested in controls elsewhere. 
these are hands that aren't really strong enough to use the normal gamma sequence. You could use the gamma sequence and it would probably work out fine, but this way makes the bidding very easy because uh, we're only interested in controls that they have outside our short suit. And so we shortcut because we're only interested really in hands where we've got a perfect fit. Um, as I said before, it's always using the strong beta scale and uh, consequently it really is hands where we need partner to have the right controls and in the right places for us to consider a slam and uh, so they need to have good controls but that's even excluding one suit potentially so they might have the controls but if they're in the wrong places we're not interested okay if you if you would be okay going to slam when partner has three or less controls then you shouldn't be using this exclusion beta bit okay um, you know if you're potentially interested in a slam where partners only got two controls if it's in the right place then use the gamma sequence instead because clearly you're you've got really good controls and this is potentially when you haven't but you need partner to have the right place the bids you know the controls in the right places so if you've got the perfect fit you're going to end up bidding slam if you haven't got the perfect fit then probably it's not there anyway I'll Um, no, I disagree. If you're thinking of a slam, you're potentially interested in controls in your doubleton suit. Barry? You might have, say, XX in your doubleton suit, and you just need to know whether partner can control that suit. That's okay. I, I mean, if you can lose two tricks in a side suit, it doesn't matter whether you've only got two cards in the suit or five to the queen. It's still, it's still, you need part to have the controls in the right places. Not available. There isn't space to start using splinters here, John. Um, uh, You know, I, I mean, there's no provision at the moment for exclusion beta in those kinds of um, sequences. We may reconsider that. OK, but, um, you know, we, we may reconsider that as time goes on. At the moment, exclusion beta is limited to those major suit openings and either an immediate splinter uh, with a double jump shift or a forcing no trump response and then a simple junk shift into a new suit over okay I haven't had time John to look at the forum much recently uh, I, I will try and have a look but I'm working 12 hour shifts all this week from Monday through to Friday and I'm working my rest day on Saturday um, so it's unlikely I'm going to get a chance to look at it this week um, Naomi will have forgotten what I look like by the end of the week <laughs> <laughs> she'll have peace she says nightmare um, okay so I'll show you an example retirement you must be kidding um, no I've never uh, never fully retired but I was away from work for 10 years looking after Naomi um, for a while but uh, she's a bit better now and uh, we could do with the uh, the income so I'm back to work working in a call center but uh, they need some extra hours next week so I'm working all the hours that God sends right so I'll give you an example of uh, exclusion beta a bit later um, right okay so there are actually innumerable places in the system where a bid can be beta some are specific to very specific sequences and it's simply specified in the system that that particular bit in that sequence is beta 
Um, uh, so, as we go through all the asking bids, uh, I will mention those, obviously, but there's too many of them just to, to go through now. And there is mostly a pattern as to when they occur. Um, so you'll see as we go through. There's actually, now that Relay Beta is here, there are fewer and fewer of them. Okay, so that's the kind of hand that might use Exclusion Beta. So here, partners open one spade, you want him to have the king of spades, you want him to have the ace of diamonds, and you want him to have uh, at least the ace or the king of clubs. You're not interested, really, in any heart controls. Um, if, they, if they don't have the ace of diamonds, you need them to have the ace king of clubs, because otherwise... Uh, a club lead is almost certainly going to doom you to two losers. So basically, if partner doesn't have that, um, then you're not going to be interested in a slam. So over a one spade bid, you might bid four hearts, which would be exclusion beta in hearts. So we're asking how many controls partner has in spades, diamonds, and clubs. And they ignore the heart suit completely. Even if they got the ace king of hearts, it's no good to us because they're in the wrong place. So we need them to have um, either the King of Spades, the Ace of Diamonds, and at least the King of Clubs, or we need them to have the King of Spades uh, and the Ace King of Clubs, or potentially the Queen of Spades, not the King, but now we also need them to have the Ace of Diamonds and the Ace King of Clubs. All of those are hands with five controls. So that's a fairly good example of the kind of hand that might use Exclusion Beta. Because if partner bids four spades over four hearts, showing that they've only got naught to four controls outside the suit, now almost certainly we probably haven't got enough because there's a very good chance that at least one of those controls, um, or, or they're either, if they've got four controls, the chances are that they're not in the right place. Not ideally. Because um, really we need them to have five controls to be sure of, of making a slam. Okay, so um, I mentioned that, that four clubs can be beta. Um, supposing, uh, I don't know, we had a major suit opening sequence where we end up with uh, opener um, bidding um, three spades at some point maybe a rebid of three spades over um, a two over one or a one no trump rebid. Now four clubs would be beta by responder because their hand is unlimited. On the other hand, if responder ended up agreeing spades at the three level, four clubs would not be beta because opener has already limited their hand. So if all that uh, Responder can do is to, to bid or support the suit at the three level, the chances of us having a slam are very slim. Opener can bid four clubs, but it would be a Q bid rather than an asking bid. So that's why I say can be beta. Uh, okay, in some sequences, they might be beta, but it does depend on the exact sequence.
that to some extent is a matter of partnership agreement. Okay, um, there are some sequences where supposing uh, Um, supposing, and in that sequence, supposing Opener had supported clubs by bidding four clubs over two clubs, now four diamonds would be beta. But if, say, four clubs by Opener was a Q bid, generally, once somebody starts Q bidding, uh, beta goes out the window. If we're in the middle of a Q-bidding sequence, we stick with Q-bids. If we haven't actually started Q-bidding yet, then four clubs or four diamonds might be beta. But really only if the person who's making that ask uh, or, or making that bid is unlimited in terms of the bidding so far. Okay, are there any questions about when a bid can be beta? You probably do, but what I've said above there and what I've said in the chat, um, the vocal chat, um, explains most of the situations of when a bid can be beta. So far. Okay, I'll take that as a no. Okay, I mentioned at the start that uh, Beta is asking about general controls. Now we're going to look at um, uh, exactly what we mean by that. So as I've said before, we um, elsewhere, but not tonight, uh, we don't generally count singleton kings as a control. There's more to come on that particular point a bit bit later, but generally we don't count single controls. Uh, we can have, well, we can have uh, a beta after a negative response to one club. Um, if we strongly, you know, explicitly agree a trump suit, then four clubs and four diamonds might be beta by opener. Uh, indeed, th there are some instances where even after a negative response to one club, it can actually be a responder who ends up using beta. Indeed, I mentioned last week uh pretty much the only time in this system that we ever use the um, the super scale, which I'll explain in a minute, which is 0 to 6, 7, 8, 9, is when opener, responders bid one, negative, uh, one diamond over one club um, or made some other response that shows a negative and opener has jump shifted over that negative response which is itself an asking bid called Delta, which shows a, a 24 plus hand. If uh, after that, opener, the person who's made the Delta ask, gets a negative response to that Delta and ends up bidding two no trumps. And if we subsequently agree a different suit as trumps over that, to no trumps, which is handing over the captaincy. If we agree another suit as trumps naturally, then it can end up with a responder making a beta ask. Okay, so it's not impossible. The fact that, that an, a one diamond negative has been used does probably mean that we don't often use beta, but it is there is certainly scope for it as per what I said at the start of this session about 
uh, high level beaters of four clubs and four diamonds. Okay. Not, but fairly rare, Sanya. Yes. Certainly not impossible. Um, more common in certain particular kinds of sequences than others. Um, but certainly, if, if we get a one club, one diamond sequence, and then supposing opener bids one spade, and no, not necessarily, Barry. I, I mean, uh, let me just give you a sequence. I'll just type this. Okay, so we've got a, a one club bid, a one diamond response, a natural one spade bid, and then a three spade response from um, Responder, which is showing probably six or seven points, uh, good spade support. Now four clubs would be beta. Okay, that's that's a you know a not not a rare sequence. Oh right, the delta, the kind of delta sequence. I'll, I'll give you the sort of an example here. Um, okay, no, that that is it, it. Pretty much needs to be with a two no trump response because otherwise, um, opener is still going to be doing the asking. This is the whole point. Okay, so two. In this sequence, two spades is, uh, sorry, two hearts rather, um, is a delta ask. Just one minute while I just type this out. Sorry, just bear with me a second. This. Okay. So, so there you go. I, I mean, there aren't many of these sequences. Okay, so one club, one diamond, two hearts is delta in hearts, 24 plus with a good heart suit. Two spades, uh, which shows a singleton or void in hearts. Now two no trumps, um, handing over the captaincy. Three clubs is showing a suit. Four clubs is agreeing clubs as trumps and now four diamonds by responder would be uh, beta using the super scale which is 0 to 6 7 8 9 there are actually only a couple of sequences where that could potentially happen the other one would be over two no trumps a three diamond bid and then a four diamond bid by opener and that's an instance where four hearts can be beta. OK, so there aren't many. It's very rare. I don't think I've ever had a sequence where we've ended up with Responder using uh, beta over um, a Delta ask by opener. I can't remember it if we have. Um, I do think it has occurred, but not to me personally. But theoretically, it's possible. OK. And uh, in the um, in the simple system, that's pretty much the only instance of the super scale. It's that rare. OK, um, the, the strong scale is quite common, which I'll show you in a minute. But the uh, the super scale is almost unheard of. OK, so that brings us nicely on to the scales that beta uses. I mentioned before that there's about six of them. So here they are. OK, so the normal scale is the default scale for beta. So we use that when partner's strength isn't known or where they're known to be intermediate, generally speaking, apart from exclusion beta. OK, so in the normal scale, it's 0, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, for example, if we, um, I mentioned the sequence earlier which was one club positive uh, one club 16 plus one heart or one spade and then one no trump is a low level beta unless partner is a past hand unless responder is a past hand in other words if it's gone no one club one heart one no trump now that's a different situation because their strength is known 
and is known not to be intermediate because they passed initially. Um, but if it just goes an opening bid of one club and partner isn't a passed hand, partner bids one heart and we now bid one no trump, that's using the normal scale because um, partner's strength is completely unknown. They might have a an eight count, they might have a 28 count. Well, no, not a 28 count, 18 count. So their, their strength is completely unknown, but we use the default normal scale. And there's a couple of examples there where uh, partners open one no trump, which means their strength is known within fairly close limits and they're known to be intermediate. So uh, if we end up using beta, we would use um, the normal scale. Okay, the next one is the weak, the weak scale. <coughs> so the weak scale we use um, essentially in two situations. The first one is when partner is known to have 0 to 10 points. In other words, they're a past hand or they've opened a week two or they've opened a three level preempt. Um, or they've made a negative response to one club, for example, then we would use the weak scale. And the other time is when they might be intermediate, but we are even, or their strength might be unknown, but we know that they've got fewer than four controls. And almost exclusively, this is in where we've got an indication as to how many controls they've got by an earlier beta ask or an earlier alpha ask, because alpha also asks about how many controls partners got, um, but in a slightly different way. And if, if they've shown a response that shows fewer than four controls, then any subsequent beta ask will be using this weak beta scale. OK, um, so in the weak beta scale, one step shows no controls, two steps shows one control, three steps shows two controls. So the, the scale is not one, two, three, four, basically. OK, so and there's a couple of examples there uh, that show you what I mean. Um, OK, so that's a good example. Supposing partner was one no trump, we bid three clubs, which is alpha in clubs. Um, partner bids three spades, which is agreeing clubs. It's showing club support, but it's showing naught to three controls. If we now make a, a relay beta ask with uh, four clubs, sorry, four diamonds rather, um, would be relay beta. Three no trumps not because we've agreed a minor. So three no trumps is potentially natural. Um, unlikely, but it is potentially natural. Um, uh, four clubs won't be beta because we've agreed clubs. So now four diamonds would be beta, relay beta. Um, so that would be using the weak scale because partners already shown naught to three controls with their alpha response. And and that that fact supersedes the fact that partners known to be intermediate. So now we would use the weak beta scale because we know they've got naught to three controls. Um, so there's absolutely no point having a scale that starts naught to two, three, four, five, because we may end up getting a range response of naught to two, and we still really have no idea how many controls partner has. Um, and uh, we may not get another chance at a beta ask. So there we would use no. <laughs> Put simply that, there's no such thing as the super weak scale. There's the, I think you're thinking of the special weak scale, which I'm going to come to in a minute, Sanya. Okay. 
the weak scale is not one two three four okay the special weak scale occurs in one set of situations only which I'll come to in a minute and that is naught to one two three four okay so it's in between the weak scale and the normal scale the special weak scale um, I think that's actually coming up next so bear with me a minute okay so the special weak scale is is also relatively new we introduced that I think about a year or 18 months ago um, basically when partner is a past hand but they've made a positive response to one club and openers now made a low level beta ask in other words no bid one club one heart one no trump that's now using the special weak scale of naught to one two three four and the reason for that is solely to try and maximize the chances of opener the one club opener being able to make a, a two no trump bid over that beta response um, because it can really crimp opener style if they can't make that beta response sorry that that two no trump response uh, rebid rather that's handing over the captaincy uh, because it might force them to bid three no trumps and there's a good chance that uh, responder will pass three no trumps um, unless we've definitely established games uh, slam values which is unlikely unless uh, responders shown some massive number of controls but uh, that's the only place where that special weak scale is concerned it's not that we use the special weak scale any time we use beta when partners are past hand that's not the case okay it's only when they're a past hand and we've made a low level beta ask and it's only in that instance in other words supposing it goes no bid one club one heart one no trump two clubs so that's that's using that one no trump was using the special weak scale and partners showed naught or one control if we now say have a bid in the suit and um, partner agrees the suit uh, or maybe um, opener bids two no trumps over the beta response and we agree a suit naturally any subsequent beta ask is going to be using the weak scale because we know that partners got naught or one control so there are we're, we're using now a scale that effectively only has uh, two responses to it one step would show naught control uh, naught controls one step would show one control and there's no chance of a of a, a three-step response because we know that partners got naught or one control okay all right Sanya does that answer your question yes no you have a doubt okay one no trump is a low level beta there and it's using the special weak scale because responder is a past hand and one spade is showing is showing a positive with a balanced hand it's not showing spades one no trump would be showing spades remember okay so one spade is showing a balanced positive one no trump is low level beta using the special weak scale because responder is a past hand and now two hearts would be showing three controls not two okay 
because the scale is 0 to 1, 2, 3. So over 1 no trump. Yeah, but not with, not with, not with, um, oh, right, I'm sorry, you're absolutely right. That, that has stuck in there since before we started using the special week scale. I'll take that out after this lesson. You're quite right. If you go up, and I do apologize, if you go up about uh, 20 lines up the chat, okay, you'll see, you'll see, I'm sorry, uh, Sanya, you're quite right. Um, that, that example there predates the advent of the special week scale, and I've just simply forgotten to take it out. Um, because you're quite right, that shows three controls now, but before before we had the special week scale, two hearts would show two controls because that would have been the week scale. You're quite right. Thank you very much for bringing that up uh, in case anybody else was confused. Absolutely right. Very astute. Thanks, John. <laughs> okay, so if responders are past hand, but makes a positive response to one club. And if we use um, a low level beta only, it doesn't apply to high level betas, it doesn't apply to relay beta, okay, only applies to a low level beta, then we're using the special week scale of 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, where are we now? Right, so we've had the, the normal scale, we've had the weak scale, we've had the special weak scale. Okay, so the strong scale is, if you like, the other side of the coin from the weak scale. Okay, we use the strong scale when partners known to be 16 plus, which is usually when opener has used a two diamond opening but it ends up with responder asking the questions which does happen quite often um, if you cast your mind back to the two diamond sequences uh, you'll probably remember instances where uh, particularly where um, either responder uses the two heart relay over two diamonds uh, opener ends up showing where their singleton is and roughly how strong they are and there is normally an opportunity for responder then to use beta in their known singleton suit a shortage beta and that would be using the strong scale because partners known to be 16 plus uh, the other instance that's quite often um, is when uh, teller i.e. the person who's answering the questions, is known to have four or more controls. And that might be where they've made a two or four step response to alpha, which shows four or more controls with or without support for openers, for askers trump suit. Um, so now if we had a beta later on, that would be using the strong scale because there's no point having a set of responses that show less than four controls when partners known to have four or more. And I mentioned when we were talking about just general issues to do with asking bids last week, that uh, striving for brevity and economy in our asking bid sequences is always a big issue because it's always the, a danger that we're going to run out of space to ask all the questions that we need to ask potentially. Um, indeed, the number of sequences where you really do absolutely manage to ask every single question that you might want to ask is actually quite rare because usually there is a limit to how much you can afford to ask. And uh, so we always, that's, that's why we have all these beta scales is because we try and match the scale to the situation. Okay, so that's the strong scale. Um,
Okay, the two other normal ranges, and, and actually exclusion beta isn't a range really, um, it's just using the strong scale, but I do mention it specifically in a minute. Okay, so the other two ranges are super, when responders known to be 24 plus, and that is only in practice when delta has been used. That's the only time where we can be sure that the person asked, answering the questions is 24 plus. Um, there's never a situation where we know for certain that partner's got six or more controls. And the other one is, is something called range beta, which is used normally when responder is intermediate and their actual range is, in, is important. Um, these range beta asks occur very rarely. Um, and they're only in very specific instances. I think, in fact, there's only one place in the simple version of this system where range beta occurs. Um, it does occur much more often in the complex version of this system. Um, but I cover that at the end of this teaching series. I spend about seven or eight weeks going through the whole of the complex system. Um, and so I'll mention it then. I'm not going to mention it fully in connection with the simple system because, like I said, I think there is only one instance where it's commonly used. And even that is not by all the pairs that play OCP. Um, there is potentially... Uh, I will mention it because, because it will occur occasionally. If you have a sequence like uh, one spade, two clubs, two diamonds, and then a three spade response by responder. So that's a major suit opening, a two over one response in a suit, uh, a rebid in a different suit by opener that's lower than their opening major, and then a jump to a three level response by responder. We treat that as a range beta ask. But I have to say, um, I've seen that sequence come up with a few pairs when I've been kibitzing, and they haven't treated it as range beta, because it's it's rare enough that, that people forget. Um, but that is range beta, as, according to the system. 11 minutes ago, you know, all those sheep walking down the main street. Oh, my God. Local, local town up the valley, 12 minutes ago, they got about a whole herd of sheep walking down the main street. That's the A71, which is a major trunk road. Um, that will make uh, make them very popular. Okay. Um, all right. So range beta does occur, but it's it's pretty rare in the simple system. More common in the complex system. So that's that's an example of of when, according to the system we have a range beta ask in the simple system. And it is literally, it's got to be that situation. Uh, it's open to pairs to play it in other situations if they think it merits it. Um, you might play, for example, uh, one heart, one no trump, two of a minor, three hearts you might play that as range beta. But it's unlikely, to be honest, because uh, responder there has limited their hand with the three heart bid. Whereas um, with the two over one response, um, they haven't. And the three heart bid there isn't a limit bid, according to the system. Whereas when the bidding's gone one heart, one no trump, two clubs, three hearts, it is a limit bid, effectively. OK, um, so you can play this range beta, but I wouldn't suggest it. OK, back to exclusion beta. OK, so exclusion beta doesn't really have a separate scale because it's always using the strong scale that I've already mentioned. Exclusion beta is more to do with not being interested in controls in the excluded suit, a bit like exclusion Blackwood. 
Um, and in the fairly limited number of situations where you might want to use it, it's more about using it on the right kinds of hands and more about uh, what controls you include in your tally of controls. It doesn't really use a different scale. We just say that it uses the strong scale. Okay, any questions about the different ranges for beta? It depends whether you're playing the KI versions of the complex system. If you, sorry, just, oh my God. Name has just seen a gorgeously cute picture of a baby owl. Decided she wants an owl. Um, no, it's not. Um, Did I just bear with me a second? All oh, right, no, sorry. Ignore. Listen, everybody, just ignore that example I gave earlier under the um, the special week scale. Yes, it is. It is a typo. Okay. Um, all right. One club, one spade is showing a balanced hand. One club, one no trump is showing spades. That's true all the way through the system. The only time that's not true is over interference. Okay, that's absolutely standard. So, so sorry, that, that, it's not a Kaplan inversion, which is something slightly different. Um, the, uh, okay, no problem. Uh, it's, it's, my, it's my fault, Phil and Sanya. It's not yours. Um, uh, I only finished work at uh, about half past seven, so I didn't have time to go through all the example hands and the notes as thoroughly as I might otherwise. Um, so, so one club, one spade is always a balanced hand. One club, one no trump is always spades. Uh, and opener, sorry, responder being a passed hand makes absolutely no difference. The only thing that makes a difference is when there's been some interference over the one club bid. And now, generally speaking, um, particularly over a one diamond or a one heart uh, response, uh, sorry, overcall, um, the one spade, one no trump um, swap just goes out the window completely. Okay. Right. Any other questions before we move on? We're actually nearly done for beta. There's a few little points. Yeah, go on, John. This must be quite a good question because John's quite a fast typer. <laughs> Oh, this question must be an absolute doozy. Once paid four clubs, exclusion beta. Voiding club. Oh, so yes, voiding clubs. Exclusion beta in clubs. So not interested in any club controls that opener might have. And it's not normal beta either because we don't. We don't play beta ever normally as a response to an opening. In theory, one no trump, four clubs used to be. No, John, there's, there's no... The whole point about exclusion beta is that partner either has um, five or more controls outside uh, the excluded suit or they don't. If you have the kind of hand where you might be tempted or you might want to use a relay beta response over the exclusion beta response, then you shouldn't have used exclusion beta in the first place. Okay? So a subsequent relay would be epsilon 
okay so basically partner either has five or more controls or they don't it doesn't stop you from bidding the slam if they show naught to four controls but again almost certainly it's the case that you shouldn't have used exclusion beta in the first place you've picked the wrong kind of hand so if partner shows five or six or seven controls outside the excluded suit then the chances are that you're going to want to bid slam and if they don't you're not it's it's basically that simple but there is scope for epsilon asks indeed the example i'm going to show you in a minute uh has an epsilon ask after the um after the exclusion beta response in fact i'll tell you what let me just put this example up now okay um so here we're going to have a one spade opener by east okay pass by south and this is the kind of hand where we envisage you might use exclusion beta okay uh, West has got indeed avoiding clubs and basically for slam they really want partner to have um, the ace of spades the king of hearts and the ace of diamonds so they want partner to have um, certainly for a grand slam they want partner to have five controls outside of clubs Okay, so this is five controls outside of clubs. Okay, uh, East might actually have seven controls, but they're only showing five because that's how many controls East has outside of clubs. So five hearts is now epsilon in hearts. West already knows that East will have the king of hearts because that's the only place they can have five controls. But we want to make certain that partner hasn't got king XX in, uh, in hearts um, because that potentially gives us a heart loser. So now we're actually looking for seven spades here. We already know that, that East has pretty much a perfect hand for us because they've got the ace of spades we know we've got a 10 card spade fit um, we know they've got the king of hearts and we know they've got the ace of diamonds because that's the only place they can have five controls in response to exclusion beta okay so five hearts is epsilon in hearts um, So six diamonds shows second and third round control of hearts. So that's either king, queen, x or king, x. Uh, they might have four card hearts. They might have king, queen, x, x. But essentially, either king, queen, x or king, x is perfect. We just don't want them to have second round control only of hearts. In other words, king, x, x. because now we've potentially got a heart loser. So now the question arises, what West would do if East bids four diamonds over four clubs, showing naught to four controls? It's still open to, uh, um, to West to start making Epsilon bids because We've agreed spades. We've used our beta with four clubs. Um, so if if East bid four diamonds over four clubs, we could ask further. We might, for example, bid a five club bid to actually find out how many wasted points or wasted controls East has in clubs 
they would bid four diamonds showing no control of clubs. In other words, they've got no controls in clubs. But that might also be showing ace and king of clubs. So it is difficult. So, I mean, he, essentially, yes. You might take a chance on six here. Um, but you are taking a bit of a chance. I mean, even, to be honest with you, even this west hand isn't absolutely perfect for exclusion beta. Because give partner the queen of spades, the king of hearts, the ace of diamonds, and something in clubs. And we actually still want to be in six here. So it's not a perfect example. It's just one I knocked up quickly earlier on. Um, the main point about exclusion beta is that you don't really want to use it. You're not using it on 16 plus hands. On those, you should be using the normal gamma response and then relay beta. Um, you know, the, the one no trump response, a rebid, relay, which is gamma, which I'll come to when we, we look at gamma, um, and then relay beta. Because now if, if responder is 16 plus, the chances are that they've got enough controls and a strong enough hand that this isn't the kind of place where exclusion beta is really going to work. Okay, It needs to be the kind of hand where um, you need partner to be strong in controls, but you ne aren't necessarily that strong in controls. And uh, you're trying to find this perfect fit hand for a slam. Um, so that west hand there isn't perfect. Uh, it's just something I knocked up quickly to try and show the sort of hand type that might use it. But actually on that particular one, there are instances where east is going to have um, three controls potentially and we're still going to be interested in a slam, but only a small slam. Uh, Pretty much, John. Yes, that's right. Uh, um, I mean, that's an absolute cracker. Um, you know, cracking hand on which to get to seven spades. Uh, but it's, it isn't a perfect example for exclusion beta. But it's good enough just to show the mechanism and the sort of hand, pretty much, that, that West wants to have. I think but really here, West wants to have fewer controls. Um, you might give them, say, you know, Queen Jack 10 to six hearts rather than the ace. And now it's more important that East has five controls rather than um, naught to four. Okay. Uh, all righty. Let's have a look at stiff honors. If there's no more questions about exclusion beta. No, su the super beta range has always been 0 to 6, Esther. If you've ever seen 0 to 7, that was a typo. It's always been 0 to 6, right from the word go. Like I said, if you've ever, got, if you've ever, ever seen 0 to 7, please let me know where, and I will take it out, because it is a typo. Okay? It's always 0 to 6. Uh, I, I mean, literally, from uh, since 1981, I think, was probably when the super range came in. Uh, literally, in, from the word go, uh, that super scale has been 0 to 6. It's never changed. Okay, so Singleton Kings. If we have a good indication from the previous bidding that it's likely to be carrying a decent amount of its normal weight, and that's normally when either partner has made a, a Trump asking bid in that suit, or we know that they are very strong balance. That's pretty much the only times. Um, now, if that is the situation, 
then by all means include that singleton king in your tally of controls. So for example, if it goes one club, one heart positive response, one spade, alpha in spades, and responders got the singleton king of spades, then they're not going to show spade support, but they will include that singleton's king of spades in their tally of controls for the purposes of that alpha ask. And I think I've actually got an example here. Okay. Okay, so if, if the bidding goes one club, one heart, one no trump, um, we don't know that partner is very strong balanced and we don't know that they've got anything in spades. So we wouldn't include that king of spades in our number of controls. In other words, we would show three controls in response to that low level beta. So we'd be bidding two diamonds over one no trump. Okay, because the we'd be using the standard normal beta scale of 0 to 2, 3, 4, 5. So a two step response would be showing three controls. However, if the bidding starts one club, one heart, one spade, now that one spade bid is alpha in spades. So we know that partner's got a spade suit. Now we would be thinking of our hand in terms of having four controls, not three, because partners asking spades makes it much more likely that the king of spades is actually worth something. So now we would actually be bidding uh, two, two clubs in response to one spade, which we would be showing no spade support, but four or more controls. So hopefully that, that makes the issue clear. Um, uh, like I said, some pairs have a different take on that, uh, just as they some pairs have a different partnership understanding about whether you actually count the points for a singleton king of spades. Um, and, and different people have different interpretations of that, and that's fine. As long as you and partner are on the same wavelength, then that is fine. But the standard system is that we don't include singleton kings in our tally of points initially and we don't include them in our controls unless and until we have a decent indication from the bidding that they're actually going to be carrying a good proportion or all of their normal weight because you know in that example that singleton king of spades might be worth no more than the two of spades in terms of its ability to take a trick you know, if partner's got the ace or the queen of spades, then fine, it's, it's potentially worth something. But we don't know that unless they've made a trump asking bid in the suit or unless they've shown a very strong balanced hand. And even there, we're taking a chance. But when they're very strong balanced, there's a good probability that they have either the ace or the queen of spades, in which case that king of spades is going to be helping. OK, so please don't worry if you can't remember all this right now, because I'm not expecting you to. All of the details about the ranges, exclusion beta, when a bid is beta and so on. All of this is is covered in nauseating detail on the site and in those downloadable documents that I referred to earlier. OK, um, uh, take your time because it will take you time to learn. But uh, fortunately, the scales are fairly easy to remember. The situations when a bid is beta is a little bit more complex, but you will just gradually learn because the most common ones are those low level betas after a positive response to one club, relay beta uh, and shortage beta. Those are the most common ones now. Uh, the instances where we use four clubs or four diamonds as beta is much more rare now than you might think. Well, that's okay, Ellie. You know, however long it takes is good enough.
okay? The quicker you learn it, the better. But if it takes you a year to get it under your belt, that's fine. You know, um, uh, we are not all Benito Garozzo. Um, uh, I'm certainly not. Uh, so, you know, we, we take different lengths of time to learn things. You know, there are some people... Okay, but don't worry about that, Sanya. You are not alone, okay? There are some people, you know, who've been turning up to, to these classes for, for four or five years. And, okay, they may have a much better understanding of the system than you do at the moment, but they're still learning stuff every time they come. And that, you know, it's worth keeping on coming back if there are little things that you might not be sure of or little things that you haven't appreciated or, you know, nuances that that only really sink through, you know, the third or fourth time that you go through these courses. Um, and sometimes it's useful, you know, just to really bed them in, just to remind you, because there's a huge amount to learn with this system. It's massive compared to most systems. So don't worry. You know, um, I'm not disappointed in anybody who's here for the third or fourth time. Far from it. Um, absolutely. You know, and, and uh, yeah, thank you for that, John. And John, is, John has written a three-volume book on this system, and he still learns stuff. So that's that's useful to know. Um, there are times when I think he knows more about the system than I do, and I've been playing it for 40 odd years, and I wrote it in the first place. Um, you know, I, I mean, even I'm when I'm doing these lessons, are sometimes reminded about things that I've known for 40 years but had forgotten. Um, you know, for example, that time in the simple system where a bid is range beta. There are only about three sequences where it is in the simple system. And uh, actually, for, for about five seconds, I was trying to remember what that situation was um, because it comes up so infrequently. And so there are things in the system that, that are pretty rare, and uh, it's inevitable that you're going to be reminded each time I mention it as part of the course, and you're probably going to forget it two weeks later because it comes up so infrequently. Okay, so don't worry if you can't remember all this stuff. Okay, it's absolutely, yeah, <laughs> absolutely right, uh, Walid. Absolutely, and and Barry, that's actually I think the main reason why why people don't treat that as range beta, and very very few OCP pairs do, because it come doesn't come up very often, and they tend to use it as a as a limit bid. Well, actually, it's relay beta, because as soon as you bid a two over one, it's much less likely you're going to want to make a limit bid because you've you've shown that you've got a decent strength hand in the first place because you've made that two over one response. Um, you know, if you only had a limit bid, the chances are you would choose a different sequence. That's why the simple system treats it as range beta. But it comes up rarely enough that, that people forget. And as you say, you can't be sure that partner will. So even if you're intending it as range beta or would like to intend it as range beta, the chances are you're not going to unless you're in a really solid regular partnership and you know that partner is going to treat it as range beta. You know, I have kibbed pairs, have that sequence, and it's not been alerted as beta uh, and it's not been treated as beta by partner. You know, even with pairs who've been playing OCP for a while. Okay, just a few other points before beta, before we practice a few hands. <clears throat> okay, in some sequences, and I've shown some tonight, or referred to some tonight, you can have a second beta ask when the initial answer to a low-level beta got a response that showed a range. Okay? Um... So, uh, when I wrote these notes originally, there was only the 0 to 2 response to a, a standard, a normal beta range. But actually now, 
that also potentially includes the one step response for a special weak range that shows naught to one controls, you could potentially have a second uh, beta ask. You can never, ever, ever need a third beta ask. Because if the first beta ask gets a range of, of controls rather than a specific number of controls, any subsequent beta ask, a second beta ask, will always be using the weak scale. And therefore, we will always get an exact response to that weak scale in the second instance. So we never have a third beta ask. OK. OK, second point is alpha always but always affects the scale used in any subsequent beta. And it is also potentially affects the availability of beta afterwards. That's because, as we'll see next week, alpha is asking not only about whether partners got support for your suit, but we're also asking how many controls they have. Uh, I don't want to go into detail about the, the alpha ask uh, scales and responses but but put simply a one or three step response to alpha is showing naught to three controls and a two or four response is showing four plus controls and a five step response to alpha or greater is showing a specific number of controls so after a one or three step response to alpha we're always using the weak scale because partners known to have naught to three controls if they make a two or four step response, we're always using the strong scale because partners known to have four or more controls. And if they make a five step or greater response to alpha, beta is not available after that because we already know exactly how many controls partner has. Because all of those five step or greater responses to alpha show a specific number of controls. So more on that next week. What else is there? OK. OK, so beta is a, a very, it's, it's the commonest asking bid of all, bar none. However, beta is not always the best route to find out what you need to have, need to know. You know, there may be uh, situations where there is only one thing that matters um, about partner's hand, and it's whether they've got the ace of hearts or whether they've got the king of hearts and nothing else matters because you've got everything or you've already established everything that you need to know about partner's hand if that's the case there's not much point making a beta ask you might as well forget beta and just go and make an epsilon ask in the one suit that matters so don't think that you have to make a beta ask in every single asking sequence you don't and the what there are some uh Asking bid sequences, uh, you know, or rather, there are some combinations of hands where the sequence is such that actually making a beta ask is actually a mistake because you're using up valuable bidding space for that beta ask, which you could potentially use for a different ask that's actually going to tell you more about what you really need to know about the hand. Uh, not important, but why you gave alpha an upper letter when it's much rarer than beta in the way of the first answer? I'm not quite so sure what you mean. I didn't actually choose that the asking bids alpha, beta, gamma, epsilon, theta eta and zeta and yeah and zeta are not my invention okay those are the asking bids that were in the original definition of super precision the ones that jason and i created were delta 
and IOTA. Um, since Jason and Mai's time, we created um, Sigma. No, nah, it's okay. So the reason that, I, I mean, actually, I'll tell you the reason why Alpha came first. And it is actually because Alpha is the prime. Yeah, well, no, Janistern, Janistern is the book that I learned from. But I think you will find that his his version of the asking bids comes from the original definition of super precision by Benito Garozzo and Giorgio Belladonna. Okay, it's actually um, quite a long time, in probably 30 years, since I read either of those books. Um, so I may have remembered wrong, but I, I think you will find that Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Epsilon, uh, Zeta, and Theta are in Benito Garazzo and, and Giorgio Belladonna's book as such. And Janistern has basically picked them up from that. But I originally uh, taught myself the asking bids and wrote the original version of OCP using Janistern's um, book that was translated by Rhoda Lederer into English. Uh, that was my original birth into precision was through Janistern. Uh, I've subsequently read Belladonna and Grotzo's book, which is the original Bible, um, but it is now probably 30 years since I read that. So if I've remembered it wrong and, and they're in there as something else, then I apologize. Um, but I learned it from Janice Stern and I, I think Janice Stern took it, took the asking bids portion of his book on precision from uh, Garozzo and Belladonna. But certainly the, the, the bids, the asking bids that Jason and I created were mainly Delta and Iota. Um, I think Eta is in the original definition by Janice Stern. Sigma has come along more recently, and I'm not 100% sure about Zeta. Um, anyway, the main point here is that beta is not always the best bid or the best way to go, um, particularly when um, there's very, very specific things that you need to know about one particular suit. And, and what partner has in the other suits doesn't really matter. Uh, I think I've got a couple of example hands, actually, that might, uh, might show that later on. OK, last, well, fourth, fourthly, your ability to analyze the hand and to analyze the bidding so far is absolutely crucial with asking bids. Um, if you, and this is something that you will only learn with time. This is not something you will pick up. That it's a, a method of thinking that will gradually impinge itself on you. A degree of concentrated thought or analysis about the hand will often actually tell you much more about the hand than you think you know initially. And even the early responses to your early asking bids will help to pin down what partner can and cannot have. A good example of that, to be honest with you, is, is this hand that's shown here. Once partner shows five controls, you actually know exactly where those five controls are because you know that none of them is in clubs and there is only uh, one set of controls that partner can have where they can actually have five controls outside of clubs because you've got the other four. So you might think, oh, well, maybe they've got some of them in clubs. They can't have them in clubs because you specifically told them to ignore any controls in clubs. Okay, so try and improve your ability to think about how the bidding's been so far and actually what that means 
Um, and as time goes on, and hopefully in some of the example hands, we'll be able to start showing you um, some of the ways in which you, mind, you need to train your mind to work, to work out um, what partner has. Just to give you an example of that, Okay, so that example, uh, you sat there with ace, king to five spades, king, queen, jack, x in hearts, the stiff ace of diamonds, and ace, king, x in clubs. Absolutely fabulous hand. It's a 24 count. So you open one club. You nearly fall off your seat when partner gives you a positive response in hearts. So you make a one no trump low level beater. Partner bids two clubs showing Nought to two controls, surprise, surprise. Um, you now bid two hearts, which is gamma in hearts, asking about partner's heart suit. Partner bids two spades, showing no top honor in hearts. Okay, potentially three clubs is relay beta here. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you've agreed hearts as a me by means of asking bids. And you don't yet know how many controls partner has. However, partners shown naught to two controls, and you know that they haven't got the ace of hearts. So actually, the maximum number of controls they can have is one control, because you've got all the others apart from the ace of hearts, which they've denied having. So the only control they can have is the king of diamonds and arguably it doesn't really matter what diamonds they have because it's going to come down to what they have in spades if they've got a doubleton spade or the queen of spades you want to be in six hearts and if they don't you probably don't you might eventually want to find out if they've got the king of diamonds but only if they've got something suitable in spades if they haven't got something suitable in spades, you might want to find out about the King of Diamonds because that will take care of your club loser. Okay. Um, but that will wait for later on. But initially, really what you want to do is to find out about the spade suit. So if they've got no control of spades, in other words, they've got three small spades, then really slam is out the question. This is the point I'm trying to make. Because you know you've got a loser in hearts. If they've got three small spades, you can't, there's no way you're going to be able to discard three spades from your hand, or it's very unlikely. So, uh, if, um, Sorry, I've lost track of what I was saying. If they've got if they've got three spades without the queen, in other words, they haven't got a spade control, that's what it comes down to, then that's what matters. Finding out whether they have or haven't got the ace of diamonds is much less important. If they have got a doubleton spade, the chances are that you can discard clubs from their hand on the long spades once you've roughed them good. And that should take care of your club loser. The king of diamonds in their hand is almost valueless to you because you've got the stiff ace. Okay, any questions about that example um, before we move on? Essentially, that's it for the lesson. I'm just going to um, get four people to sit and we'll practice some hands for the rest of the time. Um, but has anybody got any questions about beta before we practice a bit? Any questions about any aspect of beta? Okay. Can I please have four victims? Don't be shy.
Come on, guys. Time is money. We've only got 20 minutes. If we spend half of that 20 minutes trying to persuade four people to sit, then uh, it'll be a shame. I don't, I don't care whether it's people who are really experienced with OCP or people who are completely new to it. Come on, guys. Two more, please. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Okay. Um, sorry, Sanya. Esther got in first. Okay. Um, ground rules, guys. Uh, please feel free to use any asking bids you like. For those of you who are watching who are learning the asking bids for the first time, I make no apology for the fact that... Aha. Uh -huh, yes. <laughs> um, I make no apology for the fact that, that these guys are going to be using asking bids that you might not be aware of. Um, just concentrate on the bids that are alerted as being beta. I'm just going to set um, people up with asking bids if they haven't. Okay, so everybody's using a full disclosure bid. Um, hopefully, most of the bids that are beta will be alerted as that. Uh, I would be grateful if the four players would actually alert everything. Um, don't worry about bids, particularly that aren't beta asks, but it will give you a little bit of a flavour about how the asking bid sequences work and so on. Okay, first hand. Enjoy your bath. Oh, right, okay. You noticed that I was out of the bath and sitting in here. Yes, but I hadn't realised you got into your bath in the first place. I thought you just had a long delay. <coughs> just pass, Esther. East hand here is not the sort of hand really where you want to start bidding over a one club bid. It's too good. What you want to do is to wait and see if North South let the, door, the bidding die earlier and then consider coming in there. East doesn't have any playing strength. They don't have any distribution. What they do have is defensive strength. Okay. So here's an example of a low beta ask using the normal beta scale because South's strength is completely unknown. They're not a past hand. They haven't made an intermediate opening. So North has absolutely no idea how strong South is. So two clubs shows naught to two controls. North hands over the captaincy. South is now effectively going to bid his clubs upwards at the three level because that's what two no chumps asks him to do. So he bids his club suit. North shows a diamond suit. South bids three spades, which denies having four card hearts at the same time. And North can see now that with naught to two controls opposite, uh, there's zero chance of a slam, and we haven't got a fit, so he's just going to sign off in three no trumps. So that's a useful example here of effectively, once South bids two clubs, naught to two controls, we can be fairly certain that 
South has a, a fairly minimum positive response. They aren't sat there with a 15 count. Um, and consequently, we're just going to let the bidding die with three no chumps because North has only got six controls. If South's only got naught to two, that brings us up to a maximum of eight. So there's zero chance that we can make 12 tricks. So it's not worth looking past three no chumps. Okay, any questions, anybody? Can we have a lead by Esther? And just a claim. Doesn't matter what you claim. Claim nine of the 13, that'll do. Okay, anybody got any questions about this hand? So that was a good example of just a, a simple Commoner Garden one club sequence where we've ended up in three no trumps using a low level beta in the process. Um, and the low level betas are there just to give us a very quick indi indication of how strong partner probably is. Uh, and it gives us a good idea of how far the bidding is likely to go. Um, that's why they're in there. Uh, we don't always use them. Um, sometimes alpha is more efficient. Okay, let's have a look at another one. So one heart positive, showing five card hearts. Please don't forget, guys, to alert these bids if they if they're alertable. Ah, thanks for letting me know, John. I was about to say please turn up to your practice tomorrow, but if it's not on tomorrow night. Um, it's not a bad thing that because beta by itself is um, maybe you can. Um, it, the trouble is with beta is that it's a, apart from the natural sequences where four clubs and four diamonds are beta, we're talking about asking bid sequences, and really until we've gone through until I've gone through um, at least alpha, gamma, and epsilon. Um, beta by itself has only a limited application without some of the other asking bids. So doing a practice just on beta is almost impossible. Okay, so here we had a low level beta of one no trump. West bid two hearts, which shows four controls. Now, East bid three hearts, which is an asking bid called Gamma, asking about West's hearts. Three no trumps showed a five card heart suit with one top honor. So East knows that West has got ace to five hearts and uh, four controls. So we also know that um, uh, we're only actually missing one control. There's one king missing somewhere. Carry on, Esther. Now, I mentioned, just stop there a minute, uh, Barry, if you would, or stop there, Michael. Um, I mentioned that four clubs can be Epsilon. Supposing one no Trump got... Uh, a response of two clubs showing not to two controls then here potentially four clubs would be beta because partners number of controls isn't yet known uh, so this would be relay beta over three no trumps however because part West bid two hearts over one no trump we know exactly how many controls they've got so now four clubs can never be beta in this sequence 
because it, it, it can't be either relay beta or a high level beta because we already know how many controls West has. So four clubs is now Epsilon asking about what degree of control West has in clubs. Okay, carry on, uh, Michael. Sorry, I just wanted to put that in because it was a good, a good point to make. Okay, so four spades. It's a three-step response, so it shows second round control of spades. Um, so that might be a singleton club, but more likely it's the king. But it could be either. So now East has to decide where they're going to go over four spades. I think I'd be asking again in clubs. No, I'd be asking again in clubs, Esther, actually. Um, Esther, bid five clubs, not five diamonds. Five diamonds is a mistake. Okay. What you really want to do, you can't ask everything here, but it's more important to, to tie down what kind of control the club control is. Because potentially the response to five diamonds isn't actually going to tell you whether that second round control of clubs is the king or not. Right. Stop there, please. Stop there. Um, Michael may not be aware of this, okay? Uh, or he might have forgotten. But with... So five clubs is a repeat epsilon. We come to epsilon in a few weeks' time. But it's a repeat epsilon asking what kind of second round control that four spades response was showing. And... The responses, in order, go shortage, in other words, it was a singleton, an honour, which means they've got king xx of the suit, or both, which means they've got the stiff king, or a four-step response is showing a four-card or longer suit without the jack, and a five-step response is a four-card or longer suit with the jack. In other words... Um, here, five, five diamonds would be showing a singleton club. Five hearts would be showing king xx. Five spades would be showing the stiff king of clubs. Five no trumps would be showing king xxx or king xxxx. And five clubs would be showing king jack xx or king jack xxx yes of course you can have an undo michael <laughs> and we always show no five five six clubs michael because you've got the jack thank you This is a really, this is actually a really good sequence. If this had occurred in the penultimate hand of the Bermuda Bowl final last year, uh, OCP would have got this one right, but very, very few other pairs would. Esther, I'm sure, is going to make the right decision here. And this is, this is a really good, you know, I said earlier on about analyzing the hand and trying to figure out what to do. This is a really cracking example of how your mind needs to work. Yes, thanks for stepping into the breach, Roger. Yes, absolutely no pressure, uh, Esther. You know, bid what you like, but make the right decision. <laughs> if you like in a minute, or if you like, Esther, I will now explain why you need to 
um, to bid what you are actually going to end up bidding. This is a really good hand, actually. Okay, so just as four spades over four clubs was showing second round control, six no trumps over six diamonds is also showing second round control. So now we know that West has got ace to five hearts. We know they've got king jack to four or king jack to five clubs. And we know they've got second round control of diamonds. So that could be either a singleton diamond, it could be king xx, it could be the stiff king. Uh, failed at the final hurdle. Okay. Um, just lead, would you, John? And claim 12 tricks. And then I'll explain what I mean about analysing the hand. Okay, thank you very much. So now everybody can see the hand. Right, so look at this from East's perspective. Okay, we know partner's got five card hearts. And we know they've got king jack to four clubs or king jack to five clubs. What actually matters is where they've got king jack to four clubs. Now think about the dis their, distrib their possible distribution in spades and diamonds. They've got... Okay, Ali, well, let me explain about this, okay? They can only possibly have a maximum of four cards between spades and diamonds. So they've either got two in each suit, or they've got a singleton diamond and three card spades, or they've got a singleton spade and three card diamonds. Okay, either way, unless, unless they've got, uh, in fact, no, whatever happens, we've potentially got a loser in the east hand. Okay. If you look at the hands as they actually are, where partner's got king to three spades and a singleton diamond, we've potentially got a spade loser. If partner's got um, king xx in diamonds and a singleton spade, we've potentially got a diamond loser in the east hand. And where west has got... Um, two cards in diamonds and two cards in spades and the king in one of those suits we've got a loser in whichever spade sorry whichever suit they don't have the king of how can we get round this the answer is to play this hand in clubs not hearts because if you think about it if we play this hand in clubs where partners only got four card clubs we've still got an eight card fitting clubs and because we know that partner's got king jack xx in the suit clubs is the suit to play in because now we have a discard okay esther as you wish um now we have a discard um yes we probably will be ending in a minute guys sorry i'd forgotten what the time was OK, if you play this in clubs, if you play this hand in clubs, um, particularly now that we know that, that West has got second round control of diamonds. OK, we know they've either got king to three or a singleton. Can't really be anything else. OK, so where they if they've got king to three diamonds, then they must have a singleton spade. And their fifth heart is going to take care of our diamond loser. Or they've got a singleton diamond and three card spades. In which case, 
the fifth heart is going to take care of our spade loser. Okay, um, there was a very, very similar hand to this. It was the penultimate hand in last year's Bermuda Bowl. And uh, a bit more extreme than this, but basically uh, the pairs had a nine or a ten card fit in a major and a motion fit in a minor. And the only grand slam that could make was the motion fit in the minor because the discards were the right way around. And only one pair who were playing Stone Age Ackle, by the way, actually bid to seven of the right suit. Loads of people were ending up in a grand slam in the major and going off because you weren't getting the discards that you needed. Here, you need to play this hand in clubs if you're going to play at the seven level because it is the only Grand Slam that's going to make. Anybody got any questions? Has anybody thought of any questions about beta generally that they forgot to or didn't think to ask earlier? Okay, guys, it's 11 o'clock. I haven't eaten yet, so I'm going to stop there, if you don't mind. Absolutely, and, and thank you, Barry. That's a good point. Here... Uh, We'll see this again when we end up looking at Epsilon, okay? If you make an Epsilon ask with four clubs and then you make a repeat Epsilon ask with five clubs, okay, an eventual bid of seven clubs is to play because we know exactly what partners got in the suit. The only time it wouldn't be to play is if the repeat Epsilon showed a shortage and we didn't yet know exactly how many controls partner had and guess what that bid would be then? Anybody? Anybody going to tell me what a bid of seven clubs would be if West had shown a, sh a club shortage and we didn't yet know how many controls West had? Nobody? Well, it would be beta. Very good. No, it would be a, this is a third bid in an Epsilon suit where the repeat Epsilon ask showed that they had a shortage, a singleton or a void. In that case, a third bid in the Epsilon suit would be beta if we didn't know how many controls partner had already. If we did, uh, then it would be to play. Or it would be asking what kind of shortage. No, seven, seven clubs not safer. Seven clubs is the only grand that's guaranteed to make. You might make seven hearts, but only if you find the queen of spades. And that's a 50% a 50-50 proposition because you can take the, uh, the finesse either way. OK, if you're going to be in a grand slam here, it's got to be clubs because you know that you can make that. Seven hearts is only a 50% proposition. And so few people are going to bid to a Grand Slam that makes, because they're all going to be in hearts, not clubs, that it doesn't matter if, if uh, the fact that you're going to play in a minor suit where you might be able to make it in a major suit, the extra score you're going to get for that is going to be immaterial in a large room of pairs where most people, if they're in a Grand Slam, are going to be in the wrong Grand Slam and half of them are going to be going off. Play in the club Grand Slam where you know you can make and you're going to be at the top of the room. Okay, guys, we're going to finish it there, I'm afraid. Um, you're welcome. Uh, it's a good example, Hand, that of how you need to start thinking. Okay. Anyway, uh, thanks all for coming. I'll see you next week.